Coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast, the defense only allows three points. Problem is the offense didn't score at all. That plus a whole lot more comes up on Monday's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast, December 11th, 2023. Just win. Just win. Just win. Just win. The autumn wind is a raider. Pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down and laugh when he's conquered and won. And won. And won. And won. And won. And welcome in Raider Nation to another edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast. Thank you so much for making the show your first listen of the day. Make sure you subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts to get the latest edition of the show as soon as it becomes available. Of course, as always, if you're checking us out on YouTube, we thank you in a major way. We thank my man Ari. He does a great job each and every day making sure we're on YouTube looking good and sounding good. Without Ari, there is no YouTube page. So we thank him in a major way. You can check him out on Twitter at RA Producers. You can hit me up as well at your boy Q254. And we got the Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line at 707-654-4693. Normally on Mondays after a home game, I don't have calls and texts because I'll just do locker room sound. And I did get a lot of locker room sound. But I think that calls and texts are due on today's show since the Raiders lose to the Vikings 3-0. So I know there's a lot of feedback from Raider Nation, so I want to go ahead and get some calls and texts in immediately since it is a short week and the Raiders will play the Chargers coming up on Thursday at Allegiant Stadium. So in segment number three, you will hear calls and texts. Segment number two, even though the Raiders lost, I think there was a lot proven in Sunday's game. We'll talk about that in segment number two. Here in segment number one, I'd like to do the news and notes of the day, really how the Raiders came about to their 3-0 loss and, uh, you know, kind of what were some of the stats that went behind the loss and dropping them to 5-8 and eight overall in uh, in the AFC West and just their overall season record is 5-8. and eight. Before we get into any of that, though, I do want to tell you today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. It's the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use code all lowercase locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. So, the Raiders lose 3-0 to the Vikings. They're now 5-8 and eight overall. They're 13th in the AFC Conference. Only the Jets, Titans, and the Patriots are worse, and the Patriots have actually been officially eliminated. Them and the Carolina Panthers have been officially mathematically eliminated from the playoff chase. So uh, the Raiders aren't doing too hot, obviously. They're in 5-8. and eight. Uh, I'm not talking about playoffs. I'm just looking at the team in, in general and uh, hoping that they finish off the season really strong in what I like to call evaluation season as they have four games left to go starting on Thursday with the L.A. Chargers that will look likely be without Justin Herbert as he left the game with a finger injury, broke his uh, right index finger. So I'm most likely uh, you'll see that he'll be out on Thursday and he could very well uh, miss the rest of the season for all we know. Probably find out a little bit later on today what's going on with Justin Herbert. But when it comes to the Raiders, let's talk about what went right, and that's the defense. The defense only allowed three points. That's it. They had a hell of a day. Five sacks on the day. Max Crosby, who we all know is nursing a knee injury. He went down early in the game. Looked like he was kind of banged up. He went off the field. He was out for one play and got right back into, into the, the game. He had two sacks on the day. His overall uh, total is up to 13 and a half on the season. Robert Spillane had a sack. Tyree Wilson had a sack. And Janarius Johnson, who had just got called up off the practice squad, had a sack as well. So five sacks on the day and only three points allowed. And the Raiders lose. That was just all bad. The hell of an effort from the defensive side of things. I mean, they went out there, and they didn't give the Vikings anything. The Vikings attempted a field goal early in the game, and they missed it, and that was just about all. You know, the defense held their own and uh, did everything they could to give the, the Raiders an opportunity to win the game. The only thing they didn't do, which clearly at one point in the game, I think it was late in the third quarter, it was pretty obvious. I tweeted out, it's going to be a, a defensive score that's going to win a game for the silver and black because the offense just wasn't getting it. The offense, they turned the ball over actually technically three times. Twice, if you're, you know, you're, you're being realistic, they turned the ball over at the very last uh, play of the game when Devontae Adams had the ball. He pitched it back, and uh, Greg Van Roten, he, uh, he got it uh, as an offensive lineman. He starts to run the ball, and then he pitches it again, so it was a fumble, and Minnesota recovered it. So that was one of the fumbles, but Aiden O'Connell threw an interception, which basically sealed the deal on the game late in the game. But the play that really hurt the Raiders the most was when the Raiders finally made it into the red zone. They only made it into the red zone one time. They get all the way down to the 11-yard line, they get a penalty on them, so they're 10 yards back. Then Aiden O'Connell throws a bad pass to Hunter Renfro. He tries to make something of it, and he fumbles. 
and that was the only time that they made it into the red zone. They never made it back. And any time that they looked like they had a little bit of offensive momentum going, some kind of penalty, a holding penalty, or something happened where they got pushed back. And the Raiders have proven offensively they're not good enough to overcome second and long, third and long. They're just not. If they get to second and 20, please believe they're going to punt the ball. And that's just unfortunate. The Raiders just cannot overcome that all that money invested on the offensive side of things they just aren't a very good offense and you know coming off the bye week to not score anything was really embarrassing viking fans took over allegiant stadium uh, they were very loud they were doing the skull chant uh they were they were having the time of their life even though they won 3-0 and that was it so it's not like minnesota did anything too great but they were able to do just enough to win that game. And I'll tell you right now, uh, the Raider fans uh, that were in attendance at Allegiant Stadium would have loved to have been able to leave there with a 3 nothing win. There would have been a lot of questions, but a win is a win, and the Raiders would, uh, would definitely have taken that. Instead, they took the L on Sunday, and it just did not look good. A.J. Cole, he had himself a day, right? I saw Shane Legler on my way to the locker room, and I saw him, and I said, well, today's a day for you, huh? Uh, punters were very, very busy, and he just kind of laughed. A.J. Cole punted the ball eight times for the Raiders. For 433 yards, he had two touchbacks. Two were down inside the 20. One was incredible. He actually had an 83-yard punt, which is the longest of his career. Uh, And that 83-yard punt is tied for the fourth longest punt in the NFL since 2000. Uh, DJ Turner had an opportunity to down the ball right around the one or the two-yard line. Just couldn't do it. Uh, He ended up getting into the end zone, and that was a touchback. But, man, what a hell of a punt. And, again, eight punts for 433 yards is what A.J. Cole had to do since the Raiders' offense was so bad on Sunday. There was a point in the game where I tweeted out that uh, that game felt like, that game on Sunday felt like that game back in, what was it, 99, I think? I think it was 99 when uh, when Wade Wilson threw that that touchdown pass to James Jett at the very end of the game when they were playing the Chargers, and it was a terrible offensive game. I think the Raiders ended up winning that game, what, 7-6? to six? I think that's what it was. But anyway, I tweeted it out, said this game feels like this game. And I remember being at that game and leaving early. That was the only time I ever left the Raider game early because I thought, well, this is terrible. They're not going to win this game. And then all of a sudden, halfway to my car, I'm through the Coliseum parking lot. I hear the crowd losing their mind, realize that uh, Wade Wilson hit James Jett on that deep ball. Boom, touchdown. And uh, the Raiders end up winning that game. And I, uh, I witnessed it. Well, I was there for it <laughs> in the parking lot. But that's what that felt like on Sunday. Unfortunately for the Silver and Black, they did not come out on the winning side of things. Max Crosby had himself a day. I mentioned the two sacks. He had 10 total tackles, two sacks, three tackles for loss, and four quarterback hits. I mean, he's playing his tail off. He really is. He's doing everything he can, even though he's banged up, right? Knee injuries, whatever the case may be, the guy is given everything he has, and he's trying to win defensive player of the year. He's trying to will his team to victory. He's trying to do Every single thing, be a great leader, be a great spokesman. It doesn't matter if the team wins, they lose, they tie, whatever the case may be. Max Crosby always speaks to the media afterwards. Uh, Other guys do not. Uh, Devontae Adams normally speaks to the media as well, but as soon as they opened up the locker room, Devontae Adams was on the first thing smoking. Went right past me, smooth, just boom, he was out of there. The offense, as you could probably tell, since they scored zero points, were not very talkative uh, in the locker room following the game. Josh Jacobs, he left after he got banged up. He tried to continue to fight, but he couldn't. He had 13 carries for 34 yards, two catches for 16 yards. Did not have a very good day. New Minnesota and their rush defense was going to be tough, and they were. They were very tough, and so I thought it was a day that maybe Jacobs could catch a bunch of passes out of the backfield. Uh, That didn't happen either. He got, like I said, banged up pretty early in the game, tried to battle through it, and just wasn't able to to get it done. But with the 13 carries for 34 yards, he notched his fifth consecutive season with 800 plus rushing yards, joining Derrick Henry as the only two players in the NFL to record 800 plus rushing yards in each season since 2019. His five straight seasons with 800 plus rushing yards is the second longest active streak in the NFL. As for Josh Jacobs. Also, I mentioned Max Crosby and the 10 total tackles, and I don't know why I didn't pass his nugget along as well. Crosby became just the fourth player in NFL history since 87 to record 300 plus total tackles and 50 plus sacks in his first five NFL seasons. Uh, He has 74 tackles on the season. Uh, He passed his previous record of 73 in 2022 for the most tackles by a defensive lineman in their first 13 games of a single season in Raiders history. Crosby, 74 tackles are also tied for the most in the NFL among defensive linemen. Again, D linemen normally don't stack up tackles like that. That's, That's like linebacker numbers. Like Robert Spillane's at 105 tackles on the season. Max Crosby's at 74 
from a defensive lineman. Now, again, that normally doesn't happen from the D-line position. The sacks, yes. The tackles, not like that. So uh, hats off to, again, Max Crosby for giving everything he's got, being out there, trying to will that team to victory, and they just weren't able to do it. Again, everything the defense did was great. Only thing they needed to do was score a defensive touchdown because the offense clearly wasn't getting it done. I mentioned the locker room players that we did talk to, Amik Robertson, Tyree Wilson, Nate Hobbs, Jacoby Myers. He talked for a quick minute. A.J. Cole, Dylan Parham, Max Crosby, and Janarius Robinson. So we caught up with all those guys. I won't play any of that sound today on the show, maybe tomorrow. But since it's a short week, I wanted to get some calls and text on the show. So we'll do that coming up in segment number three. Segment number two, what this loss to the Minnesota Vikings proved. I'll tell you, tell you about that after I tell you about one of our great sponsors here on the Lockdown Raiders podcast, and that is DoorDash. If you're at the house and you're watching the game and you don't want to leave because the action is so great, not like the 3 nothing loss to the, to the Vikings on Sunday, but the action is great. You're at the edge of your seat. You don't want to go anywhere, but you're hungry. You look in the fridge, there's nothing. Well, that's when it's time to spring into action and use DoorDash. And everyone except for me uh, should have DoorDash on their phone already uh, downloaded, right? It's super easy to put the app on your phone. Um, For some reason, I don't know why I take the longest to do it, but good thing for me is the wife has it on her phone. So anytime uh, emergency calls and we need to get some food, she's able to open up her app and boom, bada boom, bada bing. It's just that simple. There's a lot of go-to places that we have around our house, like Grimaldi's and uh, Pizza Rock and you know, we've got the Chick-fil-A. We've even got Smith's Grocery Store right around the corner from us as well. And DoorDash goes to all those places. And so you can uh, go to all your local favorites if that's what you choose. Of course, you can go to places like a Chick-fil-A, like a Wendy's, like an In-N-Out, something like that. That's You can find just about everywhere. You can go to that as well. DoorDash will take care of you in a major way. If you don't have the app, if you're like me and you're living in the Stone Age, you can download it right now. You'll get 50% off up to $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order. Again, you got to download the DoorDash app and enter the code LOCK23. And $15, if that's your order, you know that's like one simple burger and, and, and drink. Right. I mean, maybe fries too. fifteen dollars is nothing that doesn't it's not like what it used to be. Right. Remember when you used to get the meals? It was like two bucks. It ain't two bucks anymore. So fifteen dollars. That's real simple. You'll 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 spend that real quick and you'll get 50 percent off up to ten dollar value when you spend that fifteen dollars or more on your first order. But you got to download the DoorDash app. Enter the code LOCKED23. Again, the code is LOCKED23 for 50 percent off up to ten dollar value on your first order. When you download the DoorDash app and spend fifteen dollars or more subject to change terms apply. All right, Raider Nation, here we are. Segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast, reacting to the 3-0 loss to the Minnesota Vikings, dropping the Raiders' overall record to 5-8. and eight. Want to talk about what this loss to the Vikings proved, at least proved to me. And off top, I'll say quarterback Aiden O'Connell, a guy that I was excited to see what he could do for the rest of the season. I think a lot of Raider Nation was excited to see what he could do for the rest of the season. A lot of people were pounding the table saying he was the guy. He's going to be QB number one. Put him in right now. What are you doing? This, that, and the other. Well, I think what we saw on Sunday proved that Aiden O'Connell is not the guy. Uh, he was 21 for 32, 171 yards, an interception, four sacks, 25-yard loss uh, for the, all those sacks. His QBR rating was 16.8 with a 66.0 uh, passer rating. So clearly not very good, but he's still making the same mistakes, right? I mean, he's been starting ever since Antonio Pierce named him the starter following uh, him getting hired as the interim head coach on November 1st when Coach McDaniels got fired on Halloween night. So he's been the guy. There has been no pressure to put somebody else in. But on Sunday, it felt like there should have been pressure to put someone else in. Feels like at some point in the game on Sunday, Jimmy G should have been thrown into the mix. I'm not a Jimmy G guy at all. But at some point, Aiden O'Connell just wasn't getting it done. His numbers through six games are almost the exact same as Jimmy G, as a matter of fact. Aiden O'Connell has 113 completions, 1,194 yards, 63.5% passing completion, four touchdowns, six interceptions. He's been sacked 13 times, 101 yards lost on those 13 sacks. Jimmy G threw six games, and he hasn't played since, uh, since Antonio Pierce has taken over and Aiden O'Connell's been the quarterback. Jimmy G threw six games, 110 completions, 1,205 yards, 65.5% passer rating, seven touchdowns, the nine interceptions, 13 sacks, 101 yards loss on those sacks. So just about the exact same. So I know that Jimmy G is a veteran, been in the league for a long time, and Aiden O'Connell is a rookie. But I think that everything that we kind of were concerned about when it comes to Aiden O'Connell reared its ugly head, and it continues to rear its ugly head. He holds on to the ball too long. Uh, on that interception he had late in the game, he held on to it. He threw it late. It was picked off, right? I mean, he, he, when he 
He's getting pressured. You see him start to kind of ball up. It feels like he still has shell shock from that first Chargers game when Khalil Mack uh, sacked him six times. It just kind of seems like he he, he balls into a, you know, or, or, or curls into a ball uh, to try to protect the ball so he doesn't fumble. Uh, he just, just doesn't look like, doesn't look the part. Obviously, he doesn't have the legs uh, to, to make it happen when, when the pocket collapses. And, of course, the Raiders' offensive line is not great, so the pocket does collapse. He just, to me, doesn't look like the guy. Now, he's got four more games unless the Raiders decide to go with Jimmy G. And Antonio Pierce did say that all players were going to be evaluated. Coaches were going to be evaluated as well. So, honestly, I would not be shocked at all to see Jimmy G uh, starting on Thursday. Now, we'll talk to uh, Antonio Pierce following or today, a little bit later on this morning, as a matter of fact, uh, at the Intermountain Health Performance Center. So we'll ask him if he's come to an idea or uh, you know, conclusion of what he's going to do with players and coaches moving forward. But he definitely said that uh, everyone was going to be evaluated. And this was after a very, very lengthy conversation with Mark Davis after the game. Let's put it like this. It was such a long conversation. Every time there's a home game, I have to make a decision. Am I going to go talk to Antonio Pierce or whoever the head coach is, or am I going to go to the locker room? Because they always happen at the same time, so it's not like you could do both. I always choose to go to the locker room because I know I could talk to the head coach the very next day. So I went to the locker room like I always do, got a lot of conversations, as you heard earlier, talked about eight or nine different guys, were in the locker room the whole time until they closed it out. Max Crosby was the last one to talk. They said, all right, we're closing the locker room down. While we're walking out, our guy Cam says, oh, by the way, uh, AP is getting ready to go speak to the media. Oh, like, wait, I was like, wait, 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 what? AP is just now going to go speak. So that whole time, normally he's already in the presser talking to the media that chose to go talk to the coach. He's talking to Mark Davis. So they had a very, very lengthy conversation. I'm obviously not privy to that conversation, but when he says that all uh, coaches and players are going to be evaluated, it is not a shock to me at all. Uh, also, what was proven in the loss to the Vikings are that uh, the Raiders need a very good, sharp, and experienced, most importantly, offensive coordinator. To have that kind of offense performance, offensive performance coming out of the bye week is not offensive. It's offensive, right? That was an offensive performance from the offense. It was terrible. Like, you can't have that. There was no rhyme or reason to why the plays are being called. Uh, again, I think that AP should have probably gone to Jimmy G at some point, but Bo Hart agree does not look like he is him, right? He doesn't look like he's that guy. Uh, obviously, he's very inexperienced. All this is new for him, just like it's new for Antonio Pierce, just like it's still new for Aiden O'Connell. But Bo Hart agree does not look like he's the guy. If AP were to stay on as the head coach, he definitely needs a very sharp, experienced offensive coordinator, creative offensive coordinator. I don't think Bo Hart agree is him. On the positive side, something that was shown in the game against the Vikings, Pat Graham's defense is for real. I've been talking about the defense all season long, and this is not to pat me on the back but pat them on the back. They are a for real defense. Uh, they held the Vikings. They, the, the Vikings ended up benching Josh Dobbs and went with Nick Mullins. Again, something that the Raiders probably should have done. Benched Aiden O'Connell, went with Jimmy G. Not because Jimmy G's great and much better than him, but they just needed something. So Kevin O'Connell, the Vikings head coach, decided to go and make that move, and it paid off as the Vikings won. Mullins was able to get them down the field, and uh, they kicked that field goal and win the game 3-0. I think that you know AP should have done the same thing as well, but Pat Graham's defense is for real. I mean, it, it's 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 not the greatest defense, but boy, they play their tail off and they give the Raiders opportunities each and every game. Really, there's only one game this season I remember, the Buffalo Bills game, where it was a complete uh, just blowout. Right, the the Bills blew them out of the water. It wasn't even close. The Chicago game that was embarrassing. That's a whole other conversation. But for the most part, that defense has been legit. All season long, they've been giving the Raiders opportunities. Uh, they're well over 30 sacks on the season. They have 10 turnovers they've created on the season as far as interceptions go. Uh, they've done that. They've done their job. The offense has not done their job, and they're a $100 million plus offense, so it doesn't make any sense. Uh, also, what was proven in the loss to the Vikings is that it should be evaluation season for everybody. The final four games should tell you a lot. Who wants to be a Raider, who should be a Raider, and who the Raiders should move on from. I think it's that simple. And finally, not what it was proven 100%, but could end up, this game could end up proving something in the long term when it comes to interim head coach Antonio Pierce. This game, and I was talking to Paul Gutierrez about this from ESPN after the game, this loss to the Vikings could have cost Antonio Pierce his opportunity to be the long-term head coach. It really could have been. Again, going back to game time decisions, in-game decisions, you know, and, and the, the decision not to uh, change quarterbacks when clearly it wasn't getting done with Aiden O'Connell. Plus, you come out of the bye week and you don't get any points. I know he's not the offensive play caller. I get that. He's not the offensive coordinator. 
but as the head coach, you're the CEO. So that all falls back on you. So then it's the question is, were they well enough prepared coming out of the bye week? Did they practice enough? Did they not practice enough? You know what, like what led to them not scoring anything coming out of the bye week that falls back on AP. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's one of those things. And we found out before the game that uh, he had uh, former coaches in the league actually sitting in on his meetings. Uh, Tom Pelissero from the NFL Network put out, as Antonio Pierce is on the job training, as Ra- Raiders interim head coach continues, he's soaking up every way to improve his team, including having former head coaches Tom Coughlin, Marvin Lewis, and Adam Gay sitting in on meetings this week, which I thought was cool. It lets it be known that he's not the, the smartest dude in the room or he's not acting like he's the smartest dude in the room. Like, everyone complained about Josh McDaniels. He thinks he's the smartest dude in the room. Okay, AP has proven that he's not that guy. He's getting advice from other people. But for the team to come out and not score any points coming out of uh, the bye, again, that always is going to fall back on you. And I mentioned that he said that everyone was going to be evaluated. Vinny Bonsignor asked him following the game. Again, I had an opportunity to go sit in to listen to Coach Pierce after the locker room because he hadn't talked to uh, the media yet because of the Mark Davis conversation. That, that went so long. But Vinny Bonsignor asked him if there was any point in the game where he thought about making the switch from O'Connell to Jimmy G. And then the uh, follow-up about evaluation of the team. Check it out. Antonio, going back to uh, the quarterback, was there any inclination during the game uh, to, to move off of Aiden and, and turn it over to, to Jimmy? No, I think you can look at both teams, how they were looking at it, right? But for us, um, we were moving the ball. There was opportunities, penalties, turnovers uh, for us to put points on the board. And I just wasn't a quarterback. That's why I said it was an offense. It's easy to point to figure out the quarterback, and obviously, you know, we'll look at that as we go forward. But we knew what we got when we put Jimmy at, or excuse me, Aiden at quarterback. It was going to be some ups and downs, and this was not one of our better performances. You said everything will be evaluated. Does that include your coordinators? Does that include everybody going forward? The whole forward? football program. Our whole program. Everybody. Got to win. It ain't good enough. So, got to win. So, there you go right there. He didn't think about making a change to O'Connell. He's not putting it on O'Connell. He's putting it on the whole offense, which that's fair. But at some point, you got to say this quarterback's not getting it done. What do we have to do to improve this? And he didn't do it. He stuck with O'Connell. And I understand being a player's coach and showing uh, confidence in your guy. You don't want to wreck his confidence, especially a rookie, and put him on the bench. But at some point, enough is enough. I think we all saw enough. So, uh, again, I don't think that um, that, that, that Aiden O'Connell is the guy. I think this game has proven that. I think this game has proven that the Raiders' defense is legit for sure. And if AP does stay on as the, uh, as the head coach full-time following this season, he's going to have to get a really good staff, including a really sharp, creative uh, offense and experienced offensive coordinator. We'll spe- be speaking to Coach Pierce this morning around 11 o'clock at the Intermountain Health Performance Center. So we'll ask him the question, will there be any changes at the quarterback position? Is there any changes at the coordinator position? Could a guy like Scott Turner, you know, be end up being the play caller as opposed to, you know, the quarterback coach? What, what uh, you know, or the passing game coordinator, what exa- whatever his uh, role is technically right now, could he end up being uh, moved up to the offensive coordinator and let him start calling some plays? I don't know. I don't know what the answers are, but we will ask those questions when we speak to Antonio Pierce this morning. Again, it's a it's a quick turnaround week. The Raiders have to play the Chargers for week 15 action Thursday night at Allegiant Stadium. Coming up in segment number three, your calls and texts draft that Lockdown Raider podcast voicemail line 707-654-4693. We'll get right to that after I tell you about the title sponsor of the show, which is Prize Picks. And you're probably asking, what is Prize Picks? Q is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They are the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of players, pros, sharks, you, all you do is pick more than or less than two to six player stat projections, and you watch the winnings roll in just like that. Basketball season's here. Hopefully you enjoyed the in-season tournament. The Lakers get the dub on that. Uh, LeBron is the, the MVP of the in-season tournament. I thought that that was awesome. Uh, and, of course, NFL action is going on. So you can actually have combo projections. You could pick... NBA players like a LeBron James. You can pick NFL players like a Devontae Adams or a Josh Jacobs, and you can do a combo with those. So that's a really cool way to play daily fantasy sports. Also, the cool thing about prize picks is they offer a reboot policy. So your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. For football and basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and doesn't come back in the second, that player is rebooted. Prize picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with the injury insurance policy. Right now, go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use the promo code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, that's prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Promo code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks is daily fantasy sports made easy. 
Here we go, Raider Nation. Segment number three of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Your calls and texts straight off that Locked On Raider podcast. Voicemail line 707-654-4693. Let's start off with a short call from Art and Woodland. He's calling to talk about the interim coaches Antonio Pierce and Bo Hardigree. Here he is, Art and Woodland. So cute. This is Art from Woodland, California. I just want to touch him again today. Honestly, man, I don't think AP is a future coach of the Raiders, man. And even the offensive coordinator, no judgments at halftime. The offense, I don't know, man. These guys never came back from the bye week. That's my opinion. Let me know what you think, but at the end of the day, go Raiders. Thank you for the call, my man. I appreciate you. And, yeah, for sure, the offensive coordinator needs to be better, right? I think we've seen all that we need to see from Bo Hardegree. As I mentioned in segment number two, if AP were to stay on, he needs a much better offensive coordinator, offensive play caller. It's got to be someone that's sharp. It's got to be somebody creative. And it's got to be someone, more importantly, experienced as far as I'm concerned. Uh, concerned. AP, he very well could have cost himself the job by that team performance coming off the bye. Like, there's no excuse for that kind of a performance. And I get it. Someone's probably saying, yeah, but Q, the Vikings, they came off the bye too, and they only scored three points. Yeah, that's for them to figure out. <laughs> that's their issues. I'm, I'm not here to solve their problems. I'm just talking about the Raiders. They've got their own issues, clearly, right? But the Raiders coming off a of bye, that shouldn't have been what it was, especially being at home either. They shouldn't have had that kind of situation. And I think not making the switch to Jimmy G uh, was, was a bad decision. Even if you make the switch and it doesn't work, at least it shows that you're trying something and that you're going to do everything you can to help the team win. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for the Raiders like that, and AP didn't make that call. And believe me, I'm a guy who likes him a lot. I really am. I, I really think that he has an opportunity to get that head coaching job full-time, to be that guy moving forward starting next year. But I, I do think that that game against the Vikings, Sunday game, 3-0 loss, really, really um, you know, hurt. That, that was a bad one on the resume. Let's put it like that. Uh, I saw Mark Davis after the game. Matter of fact, he was coming out of the suite. Uh, Shane Leckler was with him. Uh, and I saw him as I was walking to the locker room. And, uh, you know, just a quick glance at him. You can see the disgust in his face. He was so angry about that loss. And I get it, right? Raider Nation has the right to be angry about that loss. I was sitting in the press box, not angry. I was just confused. Like, what the hell am I watching, right? How the hell does this happen with all that invested on the offensive side of things? How do you not score anything? That was, that, that, I was very, very confused by what, what the hell I was seeing. And I think that a lot of Raider Nation was as well. Uh, got a text from Raider Vic in the 757. It says, Q, Air Raid Vic from the 757. It was great to meet you with my uncle at the game. I'll always root for the Raiders, but there were more Raider fans at the Skins and Ravens game in D.C. and Baltimore the last couple of years than the home game versus the Vikings. Getting shouted down by the road team is embarrassing. The line was atrocious, and O'Connell might be just a guy. Energy is low, but go Raiders. That's from Air Raid Vic from the 757. It was good to meet you, and I'm glad you mentioned that and brought that up because it was great to meet a lot of Raider Nation. That's the one beautiful thing about being at Allegiant Stadium uh, and, and being there early before the game, getting to do the uh, pregame, pregame show, and then getting to go and spend some time just on Coors Light Landing before the game. I get to run into and meet and greet with so many uh, Raider fans and so many people that listen to this show and you know tell me when they listen to the show, why they listen to the show, what the show means to them. And it's funny to hear things that stand out, like, oh, hey, this you said this last week. Uh, that really resonated with me. And so to hear what stands out to certain people you know, it's always different and it's pretty cool because sometimes you don't think like I'll say something and won't think it's like big, a big deal or impactful. And it may be impactful to one individual in particular. Then I get a chance to meet that person. And it's like, oh, OK, that's awesome. So uh, I say it all the time and, and I don't want anyone to think that I'm just BSing or blowing smoke up your backside. But it is such an honor to be able to meet so many people at Allegiant Stadium coming in, watching the game and telling me when they listen to the podcast, how they listen to the podcast and why they listen to the podcast. It is really cool. So thank you so much. I appreciate that. And yeah, as I mentioned before, man, uh, there was a lot of Viking fans there. They were doing the skull chant. I mean, it was it was loud and proud purple and it, it, it was bad. Right. And it's been that way multiple times this year. Uh, I don't expect it to be this way. Uh, this Thursday with the Chargers, but at the end of the day, you know, again, we've talked about it before, destination, location, teams not winning, uh, Viking fans travel really well, so there's a lot of things that they played against the Raiders there, but uh, I didn't play the interview. Uh, talking to Meek Robertson, man, he was mad. He brought up the fans multiple times in the conversation. We talked for about two minutes, and he must have brought the fans up two or three times. He was pretty angry. I'll, I'll play that on tomorrow's show for sure. I want to make sure I got some calls and texts in on today's show. 
Up next, got a call from Raider G in the OC. She's calling to talk about and ask a quarterback question. Here she is, Raider G from the OC. Hey, Q. It's Raider G from the OC. I am calling because I know that we're in a short week. We have the Chargers next, and as we've seen, they're not doing great. What do we do here? Jimmy G, starting QB, AOC. No good. No good. What do we do? Help us out. Bye. Thank you for the call. Appreciate you. And, yeah, I, I do believe Jimmy G is going to be the starter on Thursday versus the Chargers. We're going to obviously ask uh, later on this morning uh, when, when we talk to Coach Pierce around 11 o'clock. Um, I just – I just think that, you know, it kind of it, it's probably that time. If he's trying to win these games and try to prove that he's going to be the long-term head coach and he could be and should be the long-term head coach, I think he's got to make the move. I honestly uh, thought that O'Connell was going to be safe the rest of the season. I thought he was going to show enough, but I think at this point he's probably showed enough. It just wasn't enough to hold on to that position, if you know what I'm, th- I'm saying. I mean, he's probably a, a, a good backup. Right. I mean, that's and, and look, he's a fourth round pick. There wasn't a lot of expectation when they drafted him. It's not like they drafted him to be the immediate starter. So he's shown what he could show. And I think he's shown what he he, he has to show. I think it's just kind of is what it is at this point. But uh, we'll find out sooner rather than later from Antonio Pierce. And hopefully it's sooner. And we find out this morning at the Intermountain Health Performance Center. Thanks so much for the call. Appreciate you. Up next, got a text from Lane in Mansfield, Texas. What's up, Q? Raider fans since the day I was born in 1996. What do you say to the people who are calling for the head of AP? Don't they know what he, what he, that he isn't on the field? Therefore, he can't put points up on the board. Don't they know that they have a rookie quarterback, rookie OC, and no Colton Miller? I just don't understand. Thanks for making every start to my day. Awesome. Appreciate you. Yours in black, Lane from Mansfield, Texas. Thanks for the text, my man. I appreciate you. And look, I think that most people are frustrated. You come out of the bye week and you don't score anything. I know that AP's not on the field. I know he's not the offensive coordinator, but he's the head of the snake, and it always starts at the head of the snake. He is that guy, um, you know, and so I think that a, a lot of that's on him, especially when you see the Raiders win games and they're celebrating and, you know, he's giving them all days off and he's telling them to go, uh, you know, enjoy themselves, relax and, and take a break and being a true player's coach. Well, when the players don't respond and don't execute at a high level, it also falls back on you. So that's why people are saying that. Now, I'm not calling for his head. I'm just saying that that game probably – hurt his chances to hold on to the job. I'm not saying it, it eliminated his chances. I'm not saying he's out of the running. I'm not saying that at all. So please don't hear that. But I am saying that that was a blotch on the resume. That was not, that was not one of those uh, signature games that he's going to go back to when he sits down with Mark Davis and say, yeah, remember that game? That's the reason why I should be the head coach. That won't be one on the highlight reel. That's for sure. Uh, as far as the rookie quarterback, yep, he appointed him. He put him in that position. Rookie OC, uh, him and Champ Kelly put him in that position. And definitely no Colton Miller. You can't, you can't help that. Uh, the O-line is the O-line, right? And so you got to deal with what you got, and you got to work with what you got. But I, like I said, I'm not calling for his head. I don't think that anyone really should be calling for his head. But just know that that was a bad, bad showing uh, for a guy trying to hold on to the position as the head coach coming off the bye week. Thanks so much for the text, my man. I definitely appreciate you. Uh, up next, this will close things out. We got a call from Philly. He's calling to share his thoughts on the game, the coach, and gives us a quarterback suggestion for 2024. Here he is, Philly. Yo, Q. Um, it's your boy, Philly, man. I'm Philly. Trash, man. This game was horrible. I think Antonio Pierce played himself out of a coaching job. Um, you don't want to be aggressive with it. Um, Aiden Connell. Maybe we might just finish the ride with Jimmy G. At least we can be aggressive with him. It may not be great, but you about to play a beat-up Chargers team in a couple of days. I mean, I, I don't, I, I don't know. This is ridiculous. We're getting out of hand at this point. There's no reason why. It, it, it was horrible. I'm just gonna say now, Jaden Daniels, greatest quarterback next year. Thank you for the call, my man. And uh, I believe Jimmy's gonna be under center Thursday. You know, uh, I've mentioned it multiple times that AP very well could have coached himself out of the job. Uh, and as far as Jaden Daniels, the Heisman Trophy winner, quarterback out of LSU by way of Arizona State, I'd be all for that. I'd be all for him being the, the quarterback uh, drafted by the Silver and Black coming up in April. But uh, I don't think that they're selected high enough. Right now, if the draft were to be tomorrow or the season end today and the draft was set, the Raiders would be sitting there picking at number eight. That's not going to be high enough to get Jaden Daniels. There's about four teams that I counted up in front of the Raiders currently that will probably go for a quarterback, right? I mean, so I, I just don't see the Bears being one, the Patriots being another one. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. Uh, to, 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 not the Cardinals. I thought I think the Cardinals are going to stick with Kyler Murray at this point. Um, 
Dang it, there was another couple teams. Anyway, there was four teams that I counted uh, up in my head when we were sitting in the press box uh, that probably will take a quarterback uh, ahead of the ahead of the Raiders. So right now they're sitting there at number eight. So I don't think Jaden Daniels would be uh, in place for them. But I guess sitting at number eight, they wouldn't have to trade up too much higher to go get him. Maybe the top three or four to ensure him. But uh, that's a good prospect. It really is. And coming off the Heisman Trophy, he shouted out. Uh, I thought it was cool. He shouted out Antonio Pierce. Uh, during his Heisman Trophy, uh, you know, his, his speech that he gave, shouted out the whole staff there at A Arizona State for, for helping him out. Herm Edwards, Marvin Lewis, and Antonio Pierce thought that was really cool as well. But that quarterback's got it going on, man. He can run. He can throw. Uh, he's, 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 got, he's got some skills. So I would definitely love to see a guy like Jaden Daniels under center for the silver and black. But that's going to do it for today's show. I don't have time for any more. I still got a text from Enzo. Got a couple more calls I want to get to as well. Plus Raiders locker room sound. Again, we talked to multiple players in the locker room. I'll get a couple on tomorrow's show like Amik Robinson, Nate Hobbs, Tyree Wilson. He had a good game. Jacoby Myers, Dylan Parham. He actually had to move to center uh, after Andre James went down. I'll say this. Andre James may have snapped his last uh, snap for the silver and black. I think Dylan Parham is a better setter. Uh, he moved over to the center position throughout the course of the game when James went down. And the one thing I noticed about his snaps is they don't float to the quarterback. They get there. Boom. I think Parham's a better center than he is a guard anyway. So that might be the changing of the guards, if you know what I mean. That's something to pay attention to as well, something we'll ask coach about this morning. A.J. Cole we talked to, Crosby we talked to, and Janorius Robinson. So all those guys, I'll pick a couple of them uh, to come up on tomorrow's show. If uh, Antonio Pierce says anything that's super earth-shattering, we'll bring it to the show as well. Uh, plus, we'll get to some calls and texts off that Lockdown Raider podcast voicemail line as we navigate through the week. It's going to be a short week with the Raiders playing on Thursday against the Chargers at Allegiant Stadium. So uh, they don't have much time to think about this loss. Uh, they got to have that 24-hour rule, and then boom, immediately start focusing in on uh, on, on the L.A. Chargers Week 15 action Thursday night football. So until tomorrow, Raider Nation, take care of yourself, take care of your family, love on your family. Most importantly, as always, just win, baby.